I'm just going to make sure I can see the right screen here. Here I am. Hi, Cody. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, we were totally just chilling watching Wade's stream earlier, which was wonderful. Um, so today we're doing something slightly different. I know I normally bring something 2D related or animator related, but this is all about Adobe Firefly this time. So I thought, let me go back to my roots as a 3D artist and actually show us incorporating Adobe Firefly, generating textures and materials and showing how you can use it within a 3D pipeline. And this time it's going to be Substance Painter, no, nope, Substance Sampler, but you'll be able to put into Substance Painter, Stager, Designer, it's gonna be a really nice, harmonious kind of thing. Katie! Hi, Christopher. Welcome on in, lovely. Right, so, since it is Adobe Firefly, let's first go to the program or the website. So we're actually going to be starting off with a text to image. Now there's kind of two things I'd like to show you because I just learned how to do an embroidery. You can literally make like a really cute little embroidery image, make it look like it's a proper 3D stitch. It's so cool. Hi, Kasan. Let me make this a little bit bigger. The eyes aren't eyeing like they used to, you know. Okay, here we go. Much better. I hope you lot are having a wonderful day so far. So currently, People are making really, really cool, cool generated pictures, which are definitely really awesome as like an idea or a muse to go with. But um, since we're going to use this for a texture base in for a 3D program, which is Substance Sampler, I'm going to look up maybe, eh, let's say a wool texture. You could say tile or repeated to help us out because we're going to have to repeat it anyway. But we'll stick as many words in as we can and we can see how this will work perfectly together. You're excited to be here? Oh, welcome, man, man. Uh, we'll repeat a texture. We could add a little bit more on to this. It kind of depends on how creative you can be. My brain is running a blank, so I'd be happy for any suggestions for what we could go with. Oh, that's actually not bad. I want to try something else and we could absolutely use this for more stylized kind of works, but I'm going to go for something a little bit more realistic. Let's say we were needing to make an image that was going to go in a book or a magazine or something to show off. Oh, the latest house looks like this. Like this is rather nice. So we've got something cool. We kind of like it. We kind of dig it. If we wanted to see what else we could get, but using the same image, we could totally go over to show similar. That way it's going to hold on to one of our images and do its best to kind of generate new things, but still kind of keep it like this. Welcome, Doris. <laughs> Thank you, Kusan. That's very kind of you to say. Okay, these are kind of cool. I do like it, but we're not going to go with it because I've got a little bit more to show you in Firefly before we move on over to the next one. How do you get Firefly? Mansan, just above your message in the YouTube chat, Cody Beers popped down a link. It's a free website that Adobe have made to allow you to generate images to text. You can even create a text image with your creative generative words that you implant, like, I don't know, maybe a slime and the word happy and the word happy would look like slime. It's really, really cool. Thank you so much, Katie. Hi, Uma. Okay, so let's say I like this one. I want to use this one as a reference image. This means it kind of does what we just did before, but we now have a slider, which means we can make it stay exactly like this one, but throw on some more sprinkles. I don't know. Is there any other words you lot want to try? So even though it's not currently up, if we do click it, it will go back, but it's only hidden for now while we mess around with it. I'm going to write black. What is black? wall repeated texture based off this one although it's half and half so it's kind of giving it a chance to do a little bit more oh that's not too bad either it's definitely gray but that's not too bad if we wanted we could drag the slider over more to the prompt which means it's going to be allowed to not be so stuck with the image i've given it so we might get a completely different image it's not bad actually i do cut oh Ooh, I'm kind of digging this one. It's kind of different, but I feel like we can use this. Hi, Oliver. 
Welcome on in. We're doing our Adobe Firefly team. So I want this one, so I'm going to download this. And yes, the image does have its metadata. So when we open it in Photoshop, we can actually go and check out its credentials as we go. We're gonna go and click continue. And if we wanted, this is sort of what I kind of wanted to do last time, but I'm sure when I work out how to get it all working, we are actually able to put, yes, images into Substance Sampler, but we can actually take pictures of real world items and objects and materials and actually turn them into a 3D object from there. So with the power of Firefly, I believe we should be able to do that in Sampler too. But we've got our image. We got our image, we're good. We don't necessarily have to do any generative fills to this because uh, we kind of just want the tile thing, but we will be back here later for the second half of what I'd like to show you. But for now, let's go on over and open our substance sampler. Welcome, Drevin. We're AI in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when you first open Substance Sampler, you'll be greeted with your homepage, as you're used to seeing in most of the Adobe products by now. We're going to go to Create New. And you'll have a model in the middle. This one's mainly so you can see what you're working on. You can totally change this as well if you go to Viewer Settings. And we've got lots of different kind of meshes that you can use. It's more to give you an idea of what your item looks like rather than oh this is my item so for this one we're going to go to a plane i'll shut down the viewer settings for now and we've got our untitled material i'm gonna call it it kind of looked like wool i'm gonna call it woolly i don't know if i spelled that right woolly now how do we add our image onto it we can actually just drag and drop our image or we can click this and go over. I'm just going to click it, I think. And we're going to get to the cute new slightly later. Here's our wool object. So we're going to click open and you're greeted with a material collection creation template. We do have other bits and bobs. We are actually going to use the use as bitmap slightly later. But for now, we're going to use the image to material option. So we do have a B2M and AI powered. The main difference is sort of based on your computer. Some computers can't use the AI powered. So if you can't, or if you're having trouble with that, try the B2M option instead. So we're going to go straight and click import. Hi, Silver. I heard there was a pixie here. I'm working as usual. <laughs> Thank you for always sliding through, even though you're working. It means a lot. Always lucky to see the pixie posse come on through, you know? Okay, so now we've added our image. We see the thing here. We've got it. But, one, we've got our logo in the bottom, which is good because no commercial at the moment. And it is kind of done a not a so bad job in making a kind of robbly or like textured material, but I think we can take this a little bit further. On the layer side, we've got three different things right now. Whenever you do an image to material, it makes your base, which if we click on that, I'm not blocking it, am I? No, okay. We've got our base shaders, which we can change, but there's a color on it, so you're not really going to see it in the moment. Hello, Katrina. But you are able to mess around with the specular level, which we might not be able to tell too much on here, but it does make it look brighter. I do like things to be more dull and kind of flat looking preferably. So I tend to turn mine down. Other than that, if we go up, we've got our image and now we can actually mess around with the properties properly. So we've got our geometry details and our height details. So if I get really close right now, we can see that it's trying to via the normals that it generated itself. It's trying to work out. Oh, let me do base color. There we go. It's trying to work out Oh, what should be up what should be down you might need to mess around with this because maybe it's done a good job maybe you want it flipped if you do want it flipped in image to material slide on down to height invert hi sean now you might like or you might need it to be flipped like this i don't think that really works for us i think it actually had it right 
in my mind, the other way around. So you can try with the height inversion. I do kind of like it like this, I think. Just more like, like I can imagine like rubbing it, you know? Hi, Alessandra. PJ, welcome on in. All right, but there's more that we can do. We've got the geometry details as well. We've got large, medium, and micro. Micro tends to give a lot of noise. You know when it's really spiky? Which you might want, but to be honest, it's kind of personal preference. You might need to get further in there so you can actually see what it's doing. And if you don't see anything happening, you might notice down here where it says 444, or in the top right, whenever you move something, it shows itself regenerating. So if it hasn't moved or it hasn't done anything, yet, your computer is still working it out. Robert, welcome on in. We're messing around with Adobe Firefly, making textures that we can put in to uh, other 3D programs like Substance Designer, Painter, and right now we're using Sampler. So the micro is so micro that we can't really see it. By me turning it up, it actually added some detail here, but I don't think we're gonna be getting that close that we need to see that. Go on then. Just a little bit, just a smidgen. Just a little, just a little smidge. Medium. I kind of, like you want it to have that kind of pushed in texture, but you don't want it to be too much that it's like, <laughs> you know when it's too much. You can, you can feel it. You look at it and you're like, mm -mm. might be stiff paint or something. Uh, large detail. I think I'm all right. I'm all right with this. She says, getting closer to double check. I'm totally all right with this. We actually have a geometry equalizer as well. Oh, have you? Oh, I, I think maybe uh, you need to be hearts and all that things. I know a few of my friends that went on, they, um, they hadn't actually added their, their user usernames yet. Please do have fun with the settings in Behance. It's actually, gosh, I think I, it's been a very long time. You know, when you've been on Behance for so long that you, sometimes you forget to go into the settings and do all the things. But I think I'm happy with this for now. We've got the geometry equalizer. So if our material's kind of doing some weird stuff or it's half off, half on, I'm on 25 at the moment. But if we move it, we can see that it's trying to find a way to make everything the same, which is very handy. And it kind of helps with the texture look. Although we can totally see some spreading off the seam. So now we're gonna move on to the next part. We're going to cut off our watermark and try to get it a little bit more repeaty. And this program, the program that we're using is Adobe Substance 3D Sampler. So if you've got your Creative Cloud signed into your computer you'll be able to scroll down the apps and you'll see a bunch of green ones at the bottom and that is this one uh adobe substance 3d sampler is so very powerful that you could technically and actually go out in the real world take a picture of your chair from lots of different angles and actually have it turn it into a 3d object for you very high polygons but it kind of makes things a little bit easier and a little bit quicker for you to do as well as the textures that we're doing here so now I want to go and crop it. So by going over to the top left, we can go and crop it. And it works a bit like Photoshop in this respect. We can hold shift to change the size of this. That way, if we hold shift, it will retain its size. Maybe you might not want it to. For now, I think I will. We're just going to pull it in a little bit. So this means we don't actually have to open Photoshop to tweak this, which is very, very handy. Thank you, Cody. Cody's just popped down a link to the program we're using as well. There we are. Wonderful. Just going to hold shift a little bit more. We can try our best to kind of make it. I think you can see over here, like we want to try to close up the gaps ourselves. That way, as we continue further down in making this look a little bit more seamless, it's going to make our job a little bit easier. So I think that's okay. Me looking away and looking back, I kind of lost where the thingy is. Apart from this, we can see this. So if you wanted to, you could totally go into Photoshop, try to even out the tones. But we're okay for now. If you find that maybe you took a picture or you did actually generate a texture like I did in Adobe Firefly and it's kind of wonky, you can go over to Perspective Transform. 
Bonnie! Welcome in. We're AI pixies. Well, uh, oh, you're welcome, lovely. Okay, so now we've got the perspective open. We can click and drag angles. This could also help you to uh, make it a little bit more seamless. So technically, if we go over here, drag out that bit that's a bit too light. As long as it kind of matched the other side, we could totally get away with it. But I'm not, I don't mind the, the shine that we had there. But this does mean that you've got quite a lot of flexibility without having to leave the program. I don't know if I like it. Did I like this? No, I kind of like that. Okay, so I did Control and Z to get rid of those. We might just grab it and pull it out a little bit more. So you're able to see in real time it doing all the tweaks for you. Oh, I'm great, thank you. It's nice to be able to go back to my 3D roots, you know. All right, so we've got our... 3d rug looking texture now but we can take this a step further to help us out a little bit more so on the right hand side since it is kind of layering it up we've got a another layer to add we want to make it more tiny so let's go up and add tile Cool. By adding the tile, we do actually have a threshold. Am I in the right section? Let me just double check I'm in the right section. We do want it to be a tile, but we might need to tweak it a little bit more. Hold on a second. Tiling. I'm not sure this is the right one. Let us go and see if I've got the right one here. Tiling. There we go. Not make it tile. Tiling! <laughs> I was like, hold on, this looks a bit different. So now we've got our tiling, although I think the make it tile was kind of good for us a second ago. But now that it's actually made it a tile, it's got some of the seam lines and all of that jazz. So we can go over to Edge now. Oh, this is the first time you've seen this program? Ah, well. It's very, very powerful. Very, very cool things that you're able to do in it. So we've got our seam line here. We can change the threshold, which if I do it over here, you can see it's trying to make a proper grid line. Messing around with the threshold would be really, really helpful in making this a little bit more seamless. I'm just actually enlarging it like it was the crop to try and find our way around this. I feel like I like the make it towel better. We do have the blur, so if we turn up the blur, it's going to do its best to blur or merge the lines that we have. And we can still squeeze these in a little bit to do our best to help it fix itself down there. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Can we help it a little bit more? That one's a little bit more obvious, I think. Turn up the smoothness a little bit. And at any point, if we need to, we can always go back to any of the other layers that we've turned on before to play around with them a little bit more. And I'm going to check out the advanced parameters. Sometimes going down here and stretching it out can be really, really helpful if you're not getting the results that you're looking for. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, RB. Hello, lovely. Yes. See, what's really nice is that when you use Substance Sampler, you're able to import these programs into any of the other 3D programs that you're using. So maybe you're doing more of your animation and such in another program. But you wanted to use a, a texture that you made earlier on, or maybe it was easier for you to actually create your material in Substance Painter or Substance Sampler, you'd be able to take it from here and easily import it to any of the other ones. So it's a very nice, very nice pipeline. Okay. So I've got that. Not too mad. Not too mad. I'll be honest. I really did. I really did kind of like the other one. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hide the eye. So it means it turns off what we were seeing. And I'm just going to go back to that other one because that was kind of cool. My mistake one. Make it tile. 
I think Make It Tile is actually... I think Make It Tile is the one for me. It's just a little bit more seamless. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. That's the one. So if we wanted, we could turn the eye back on. We don't actually have to delete the other stuff. Maybe we want it there just in case we need to go back. But for now, no. But we can totally play around with the threshold again. Just keep in mind on what number is currently there. For me, it's 0 0.86. So now we can actually see the grid that it's using a little bit more clearly. Yeah, that's not too bad. We can go for the smoothness to try to help it out a little bit more. So you can either try tiling or make it tile, which I think I kind of like more. I was going to say a pun, RB, but I don't think it's appropriate now. <laughs> okay, so we've got our tiling. We're cool with that. We could, if we wanted to, go over to our viewer settings, check out the texture tiling, and if we want, it's currently linked, which means if we change it, it will change all of it together. The height and the width and all that. Ooh. But we can either unlink it if we want to move the Y and the V in a slightly different area. I, you know what, Mansan? It's the truth. Isn't it funny? You normally tend to find like the stuff you were really looking for when a mistake has been made. You really know. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> I see, I see you lot having fun in the Behance chat there. So I've got this together. I'm going to pick four. So now I've got a proper tiling thing going on. I'm going to turn this other one on, see what happens. Ah, okay. So basically it's just tried to, one, make it a little bit bigger and make it a little bit wider. We could totally use these together. It could be too much. We don't want it to be too much. Sometimes less is more. Because we aren't supposed to be that, oops, we aren't supposed to be that close to this material. To be fair, we're not supposed to be, she says, as she makes this wider. Just a little bit. We'll make it wider if we like. Just a little bit. Ooh. Okay. Do we like it, though? Off. On. It's kind of all right. It's not bad, though, isn't it? Okay, so let's say we were going to stick with this for now. For now. Because <laughs> we might change our mind later. Okay, so what now? Now we want to try to add an equalizer to kind of settle everything out. Oh, hi, Proxy. Welcome on in. We're AIing it up. We're going to add another layer. We're going to add equalizer. Or just EQUA for short. We don't have to write the whole thing. Now, equalizer, depending on where you put it, it's exactly like when you're in Photoshop and maybe you've got multiply on and multiply works best at the top, or sometimes you want an overlay in the middle of two different layers. It's the same with this one. So depending on where we move equalizer, it will kind of give us a slightly different effect, which it might definitely be easier to see with something that actually has color because we've not added any color to this. Um, I don't really mind where it was, to be honest. But we're going to have our equalizer on. See if I can make it really dramatic so we can see what's happening and what the difference is. When the radius is down, it's like it flattens the normals. So for those of us that do do 3D, the normals, it's pretty much a image. It's got no polygons on it, but the image is able to give the impression of depth and things like that. So if you were making a game, maybe you needed it to be low poly so say an arm was just a rectangle not a bunch of lines going on it but if you had normals on it you can make it look like it's got lots of texture and effects on there way more than what's actually on it which is really good for performance if maybe people are using a computer or, or something that's not as strong oh thank you kishan not the manners Wait, PJ, what's happening? What is going on? <laughs> Steve, hello. It was lovely seeing you in Waze chat earlier. I don't really mind where it is right now. Turning it up is just going to make it a little bit more detailed. I feel like it's fine where it is, to be honest. Um, now, if you've used this and you found that you've kind of lost texture or you've lost the color that you've had, which I haven't really, you can turn on keep local differences and it will turn it back to match the base color, which is what we've got here. Cool. 
But what if we do want to change the color and we don't want to leave yet? So we could go to add a layer and we can totally type in color variation. Okay, we've added it. Seems really strong right now. It actually gives us two different colors that we can play around with. So let's say I wanted maybe like a golden brown. There we go. Something sort of in this area. Maybe not like that. Something like this. Always ends up coming back to this kind of color. And then we can take the second color. So if you had something that actually had specifically one color here and one color there, it would probably show up a lot. But I'm going to make it a bit dramatic. So now you can see the white spaces in between. So as course, you can totally pop this into your editor, your Photoshop and ting. But for now, we'll just play around with it here. So we've got our dark and our light going on. It's kind of more like a rug texture, it's turned out to be. <laughs> more of a rug. Ooh, welcome. I'm from London. <laughs> okay, so we've got this. We're happy with our texture. We could totally slap it on a on this cloth effect to see how it looks. Kind of looks like one of those, it doesn't look very soft. At this point, now it doesn't look soft. You know, it's like one of those ones that you stick on the floor or something. But you want to know how to take it from here and you want to use it now. Cool. So on the right hand side where it says share, we've actually got one click buttons. So we can send it straight to 3D designer, painter, stager. And stager is actually where we are going to go. But if you don't have those programs, but you do have this one and you want to take it from here to use it elsewhere, what we can do is click export as. Steve, you two, you lot are so funny, I swear. Okay, so you've got general settings and material settings. We can call it what we like, save it where we like. And here in the material settings is where we're able to pick what it should be when it comes out, what kind of format it is. Well done, digital. Welcome on in, lovely. Today, we're taking a look at how we can use Firefly in conjunction with 3D, 3D sampler. Actually, no, that is right. Let's say the whole name. <laughs> Adobe Substance 3D sampler. <sighs> I feel like we should have like a banner that comes across every time we have to say it. Okay, so if you needed this to be a PNG or a JPEG, something like that, you'd be able to do that and it would have your channels for you. So that's super duper handy. But I'm gonna send mine to 3D stages. So I'm gonna give it a little click. I think I've got a little bit of time to be able to show you the other thing, which I just learned, which is super cool. It's so cute. Okay, so we've exported it. When it's all done, we'll open our other program and take a look at just plopping it on and seeing how it goes. Now, undercover. Cody's undercover. I'm thinking of two different songs that I've mixed up. I can completely, completely see it now. Well, it's doing it. Maybe we've made it really, really high. Oh, oh, it's done. Okay, let's go and find it. Okay, so now we've got our program. We're in. Oops, she clicked stuff she shouldn't have clicked. We're in. We want to find our materials. There it is, very at the very bottom that I couldn't see. Now, when you do click it, it does tend to pop it right at the bottom. You do have some objects that you've got here, or if you have your own, you can just click and drag them in. I'll click the armchair for now. By holding shift, middle mouse button moving, you can move this around, you can hold the right click. A snack, what kind of snack? Don't leave us hanging. You can hold shift and the middle, no, nope, shift and the right mouse button if you want to move around your object just to change the lighting a little bit. And if we hover over our object, it seems to be moving the entire thing. But what if you don't want to put a texture on the whole thing and you just want it on a little bit? At the very top right, you'll see it says armchair and a folder. If we click that, we can actually see the individual parts that this mesh is made up of, or we can just double click different areas if we like. I'm gonna click off it for now, and I'm gonna click and drag. And by doing that, it will also try to find out which one you wanna pop it onto. And now we'll pop it here. 
Not off a cliff? What is happening? <laughs> Armchair? I need good furniture. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we can make you some good furniture today. So it's pretty big. What we're going to do is change the repeat. So you can click and drag it. I'm just going to take a wild guess and make it 50. I have totally seen chairs that look like this before. So we've made it 50. If you do end up clicking off it and you lose your way, just give it another double click. Sometimes the UV projection isn't the one and maybe doing it linear is better. You can always mess around with the repeat if it's too high or if it's too low. You might not be able to see the texture that you've made. I think this is pretty good there. The bit of carpet looks like, what? what's that? I've never heard of that before. But I think maybe I have, but I never like learned the name. And then we've got our normal scale, but that's more for seeing the normals later on. But this does mean that it does give you quite a little bit of uh a little bit of free range you can also rotate the uv you can move it around all that jazz and you could head over to your background section and then drag drag an image in the back not on the item <laughs> i accidentally did that once and it's like um this mesh cannot contain this background it's like that's not what i meant to do so now we've got our camera we could totally grab our entire armchair with our little texture on it or whatever we've added we can change the size if you're not sure how to use the move rotate or scale you can click and hold and it will show you what the buttons are but it's very similar to a program i use so we've got our keyboard shortcuts w to move e to rotate and r to scale oh yes yes you're right oh my gosh it's a shreddy's chair yes 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 you're so right so now we popped our thing in place the 60s <laughs> we've popped our thing in place we can click camera make sure that you're in actions and we can click match image and the computer with all its ai goodness is going to do its best to add the shadows and the lighting for us so when we press ok it's going to be like cool that perspective you tried was not the one here you go. Man said, said, nice looking chair. Where can I get one? You can get it at your local Adobe shop just down the high street. <laughs> we need to be an advertiser. Has to be larger than the plant pot. I mean, yeah. It should be like, I made it too small. <laughs> it should be larger than the plant pot. Oh my gosh. Ignore my tiny chair, please. Ignore my tiny chair. You get the gist. There's something else I want to show you that I think is really, really cool. So ignore my tiny chair. My tiny but comfortable chair. Because you get the thing. Cool. If you did want to render this properly, you could go over to the render tab and turn on ray tracing. I don't have mine on, but if you do it with GPU, it tends to be faster, but it's quite intensive on the computer. I don't want my computer to have to think about it for too long hi penny but there's something really cute i want to show you there's something really cute that i want to show you that i just learned that i think is everything okay so back to our adobe firefly if we were to make a we we can actually make embroidery objects in 3d sampler and it's amazing no it's penny said to fix it yeah penny you can fix it for me yay penny let's say if we said circle patch cute somebody give me an animal give me an animal give me an animal so we can add this give me an animal we need to make a patch please not tarzan <laughs> okay we're like in a like the sizes are completely wild somebody give me an animal any creature i'll take it I'll take it. Give me something. A mole? Oh, I hope it knows what I'm... I'm kind of concerned about this. Hold on. Circle, patch. You want a circle, patch, embroidery. The word is embroidery. Okay, mole. Turtle? Wait, when I say mole turtle... Oh. 
Wombat Arby. Not coming in with it. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Everybody's, everyone's got one now. Okay, the mole didn't work. Let's let's try turtle. <laughs> turtle, turtle, turtle wombat. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be wild, isn't it? Should I put down all the names and just find out which one is actually cute? <laughs> if this doesn't come out right and it looks weird. Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. Okay, I'm just going to write in all of these letters and see what happens. We'll find out what happens. Moment of truth. Drum roll, please. Is it weird? Or is it... Oh, it's kind of cool. Okay, this one. This one's going in another direction. I do like the turtle. I'm going to see what happens with the ferret. Hold on. We like the turtle. Let's see what happens with the ferret. Not chupacabra. Me and my... Oh. Oh. My bad. <laughs> I did kind of like the turtle, actually. The turtle was cute. <sighs> this is way more DL than I was expecting. Did I say cute? I didn't. Right, hold on. Let me add cute. That's... <laughs> that's what it is hold on let me add the word cute i was like why is this not chibi that's like a whole an owl uh, ah! okay this is the one this is the one okay this is the one so we're gonna go straight to download it we're gonna say yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we're gonna jump into our photoshop and this is one we did earlier we are going to open it that was really cute. We're going to open it and go for our ferret. So in order to make a 3D embroidery stitch with something, all we have to do is have a circle, an image, and a mask. So let's work on making ourselves a mask. On the left, we're going to grab our eclipse tool. Doesn't really need to have a stroke on it. We can click in the middle, hold shift and alt. Have it drag out because we know this is a perfect circle then and if it ain't a perfect circle everything should fit this circle not the other way around okay so we've got our perfect circle i need this to be cut out because we'd like it to be a png object so let's hold control click on our eclipse control shift and cut off the outside i kind of want to keep this bit in if i can Let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's turn down the opacity a little bit. Okay, there we go. Try to put it in there as much as we can. There we go. Yeah, it's cute. All right, do the same again. Control on the layer. By doing that, it gives us the running stitch on the outside, right? So cute. We cut out the wrong bit. Make sure we invert our selection. Now we've got the cutie patootie which we're going to save as cutie. We want it to be a PNG. Okay, we've got the cutie. Now that is cute, right, buddy? And now we need our mask. Now, something important for you to know for masks. Mask tells things what is visible and what is not. Black is invisible, white is visible. Anything in between is like fading and opacity. So we want the middle part to be visible, the other parts not to be. So let's merge these together and let's make a mask. I'll call this cutie mask. Make it a PNG as well. Why not? Okay, we good. We can shut this down. We're not going back. And back to Substance Sampler. All right. So we're going to work with our layer like so. And we are going to pop our image in now this is on the side there we go we're gonna pop our image in and we're actually gonna use our mask first so let's go to the cutie mask let's click use as bitmap and import now it's popped mine on the bottom we've got our cutie mask we've got our base material but we need to do a little bit more now we need the embroidery he's got a white mask yeah he does we need it to know that we're doing embroidery so let's add a layer and type embroidery in. So now I've got an embroidery layer on the top here. Great. This is not the size I want it to be. So in my viewer settings, I'm just going to go to tiling 
and reduce it. We could maybe make it a one. There we go. Now it's the right size. Great. In my embroidery underneath my properties, it should already have the mask as my image, which it does, which is perfect. Now I want it to know for sure what is what, which is which. So let's go to color count and make sure it's one. So now it knows that this part in the middle is what I want to see. If I wanted the outside, it would flip it, which means that we kind of have a out trudy in trudy kind of thing, but we want the inside. So now we've got this showing up. It's already got some thread count going on for all my seamstresses out there. And we can scroll on down. We've got stitch density, which we can play with. I'm gonna to go to height so you can see this one a little bit better. We've got our stitch density, so you can see if this was a person, like they would have sat there for a long time doing that stitching thing. Depending on which one you use, you'll get a different effect. I think maybe 125 is fine for us. And for this particular mode, we're going to go for outline. So this is going to make that R kind of barrier thing that you normally see when you get like a little embroidery patch, like a Boy Scout kind of thing. And from there, we can move the outline threshold. I'm going to have like a small rim. And then we can also change the size, which is super cool. Seeing it come together is really, really interesting. Wait till we put our little cute ferret in there though. Okay, so we've got our ting going on. We've got our length. We can change our density a little bit if we need to. When we stick the other image on top, you'll see about us changing the density and all the other stuff. But there's a lot of um, there's a lot of trial and error until you find the one that actually works with what you're using. Imperfections is really nice because the computer tends to make things perfectly and humans do not. And we want the human touch. So the higher you have the imperfections, the more oddities there's going to be, which is a little bit more like real life, which is very, very, very nice of them to add that option. We do have fill stitching. So that is the thickness, or if we want it to be a little bit thinner, it does actually change the height of the stitches as well, as well as our stitch finish. Now the roughness, which we might not really be able to tell from here, is actually doing the shininess. I wonder if we can see it on this. I'm not sure if we can here. We might not be able to see the shine on this particular one. In which case we're gonna to have to play around with it a little bit more so maybe we should turn on the custom color so by turning on the custom color it kind of makes it a little bit easier for us to see what's going on so let's click the color we can change this later but for now i think the one that we were looking at kind of had this kind of color going on so something like this there we go so now when i move the roughness you can see it a little bit more low roughness means super shiny High roughness is more like, oh, it's kind of dull and matte. So you can consider roughness to be shine. Cool. What next? Because we've got the outline, we need the middle bit. That means we need another embroidery. So add layer, go to our embroidery again. And we need to change the color count. Change that to one. It's a little bit high. Fill is correct. We don't need it to be on outline. We can lower our outline threshold. And let me see. We need the one that's going to pop this down a little bit for us. There we go. Going to fill thickness. Lowering that down there for us, making that a little bit flatter. I'm going to change my stitch density as well just so it's not interacting too much with what's going on on the outside we can absolutely go down to the other embroidery make this one maybe a little bit thicker maybe a little bit wider so it's kind of harder to see the one that's on top of it or really maybe we could put it in a different level what will happen if we put this down here i'm curious does it change it much it doesn't we'll put it back up that's fine. That's fine. We'll leave it where it is. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. We've already got our outline. Mm -mm. 
We've got our image, we've got our color count, we've got our density. We don't want fill and outline, we already have one. We've got our length that we can play with. And if we wanted to, in our fill stitching, we could totally go to 12. So it kind of has a different texture compared to the top one. We can also change the fill direction which is going to make a little bit more sense when we put it on top of the one where our image is going to be, which is going to be after this one. But let's play around with this a little bit more just to see what more we can do with changing how in the way it is. There we go. Height position, much better, way lower down. Advanced settings for the win. Okay, I think now I could probably increase that fill thickness now. Not too much because I need to combat the other one. But so far, not too bad. Not too bad at all. And outline thread. Well, we don't really have an outline, so that's all right. We can turn this to 125 as well because they'll all be the same that way. Okay, so we've got our outer layer, our inner layer. Do we want this any lower? No, it's all right. I feel like it's getting that kind of feel right now. Now we want to add that picture that we created, which is another embroidery. So we'll add another layer. We'll make sure we add an embroidery layer again. And instead of it being the mask, we need it to be our cutie patootie, our little baby. Now it's a little bit high up. So what we're going to do is head on over to height position, make sure it's down. We're going to change our thread count to, I think three is a little bit too low. Four is better. We can reset this. Oh, it's too low. It's far too low for the kind of colors we've got going on. We've picked a really detailed one, possibly by accident. It needs more colors. <laughs> it needs more colors. Okay, so I can play around with my outline here. It's too high up though, so we really do need to pull it down. So I'm gonna push that down a little bit. Probably gonna have to go back to this one and raise this one up. There we go. Back to the top. Yes, Christopher. This is totally like a small badge that you could have picked up and been like, oh, I'm gonna pop this on a little badge. It's gonna be the most adorable thing ever, which it totally is. Because we've got the height bar on, we can actually see what the stitch density is doing. The more that we add, the more directions it's adding. So it kind of makes it a more complicated looking stitch. But if we add less, it will kind of seem like, okay, the person was maybe trying to only do four different directions, which totally works with the imperfections and all of that jazz. It can only work with so many colors, so it's had to simplify it for this particular purpose. But we can go back in with our imperfections. We can change, nope, we want it to be on fill. We can change the width or the thickness. We can change the length of it. I think maybe a less length kind of helps with the detail a little bit more. All right, he's a little baby. Ferret achievement. Yeah, it doesn't look a little ferret achievement. We can go down to our fill stitching. We can pick the twirl on this one if we like to kind of give it more of that affected texture. Find out the kind of one that works for you. I feel like the satin might just be fine for this one. Ooh, yes. We've got our fill thickness. Weasel Master. <laughs> We've got our fill thickness, which I think we can kind of get a gist of what's going on there. It kind of makes it seem a little bit more noir -y. A little bit and we've got so many that we can play with which is totally matching with what we have based on how many colors we picked because we said we've got six so it's kind of trying to do it for all six which of which we will skip for now we've also got our roughness on i don't think we want to mess with a different color we're happy with the color we can play with the roughness or we could turn on the anti is it anti anti trophy Nice have an embroidery combo sewing machine. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. If we go over to viewer setting, 
Is it over here? No. Channel settings. We've got the anstrophy level and the angle. And now, because that is on, if we hold shift and right click through, we can see where that would be. Kind of like the real world kind of shading and lighting and all that jazz, which is so cool. Of which you can absolutely change down here for all of the different levels, depending on what you need. That's so cute. There is one, so we've got five minutes. I'm going to see what this one came out to be. The one that I had tried before this one was that cow. And that cow came out well cute. Well cute. When I say well, I mean well. Okay. So we're doing the same thing pretty much. I'm just changing the picture. We've kind of already done the hard work. It came out cute before. Oh, what did we have it on for? It was really cute when I did it before. <laughs> All right, let me blank this out. See if we can make it do what we had before. We want the cow to look all sweet like. Pop that down a little bit for the height position. Probably just need to make the other bit stand out a little bit more. But by you going in, playing around, finding out what the correct settings are for what you need it to be. Uh, it's definitely, definitely, definitely going to be the cutest little, little thing ever. But this does mean that you are able to hop into 3D sampler, grab, I don't know, wood texture, floor texture, some type of material. It could be cartoony, it could be whatever. And then you'll be able to pop it over into any of the other programs to help you. And if you did want to take your little embroidery object to another program, or to use it like an actual sticker kind of thing. What you can do, definitely need to play around with that a little bit more. What you can do is go to your share button, go to export as, go to your material settings, and you'd want to save it as a SBSAR, pick a decal material, and then that way when you're in any of the other Substance Painter apps, You'll be able to drag it into your material folder box and it would actually be like something that you could put onto something else totally totally awesome yeah i know right <gasps> there's so many things if i had time and once i play around with it a little bit more you're actually able to take pictures of real world things and have substance sampler make it into a 3d object for you like wow the topology will be high so you do need to retopologize it but that's really breathtaking and that means that you'll be able to in theory use that in conjunction with adobe firefly as well so you'll be able to generate a really cool i don't know futuristic chair or something and then you'll be able to turn it into a 3d object retopologize it and make it usable in a game or something like that but yeah thank you so much thank you alessandra this is definitely very fun. It's nice being able to get hands on 3D sampler and I've always skipped out the first half. Substance 3D sampler and designer, actually, because I've not had much time with those ones before. But this is definitely, definitely a cool way to go with Adobe Firefly. So, yes, stay tuned. We do have Bob Ewing up next. I believe it's Illustrator Bootcamp. Ooh. See you a lot later. Hope you had fun.